Okay, this is tutorial three, lesson three. <clears throat> it's going to be a bouncing ball with uh, using Bitblit. Uh, for this one, you need to get the source codes. It's in www.darksprite.co.uk slash vb.htm. This is where I'm putting all the tutorials and it's lesson three source code. So left click or right click, save it, vb3.zip. And you'll get something like this once you've unzipped it. <clears throat> so you've got the vb3.exe, you've got the project file, and you've got two modules, gdi1.bass and sprites.bass. Also you've got a graphics folder, and in the graphics folder there's a JPEG of a background, a ball one GIF, a ball one JPEG, ball one GIF, and a ball one mask.jpg. I'm using the GIFs rather than the JPEGs for the sprites, and I'm using a JPEG background. Uh, I'm trying to do, optimize the graphic formats to the speed. Right, if I run vb3.exe, this gives an example of a bouncing ball with a colored background um, using Bitblit. And this is, <coughs> Bitblit is a Windows API uh, function which has hardware acceleration on most video cards. In the next lesson, lesson 4, I'm going to show how to use this and then stick it into DirectDraw, uh, part of DirectX 7. So this is the bouncing ball and I've also put a little X and Y tracker label on there. I'm going to talk you through the code, I'm not going to type it all in. So we've got two modules. Modules are a step towards objects, but they're not quite objects. They're, b they're basically separated bits of code which you can stick in. So you right click and add module, and you either make a new one or you use existing ones. But I've already added them in. So we've got mod GDI and mod sprites. So if I open up mod GDI 1. And uh, there's a lot of comments in there to explain what it does. Um, and it's defining a function called bitblit, declare, public declare function bitblit, lib gdi32, um, and then a long old string of commands. And then you've got a, another function, create compatible bitmap using gdi32 create compatible DC, GDI32, get DC, user32, um, that's for creating buffers and loading up sprites, loading the sprites, select object, GDI32, and delete object, delete DC, that's for cleaning up, making sure there's no memory leaks. Then I've got a comments of all the different options towards uh, the bitblit. So you have a destination device contract, context or DC, You've got the y co the x coordinate of the upper left corner of the destination so x and y of the destination the width of the destination height of the destination handle to the source dc where you're going to get the graphic from and then the x coordinate of the source and the y coordinate of the source uh, with the small things that i use i have these two always at zero and then the raster operation code is whether you're going to paint on it um, direct copy or invert copy this is useful for when you want to use masking uh, to get transparency in parts of the image. If I go back to the graphics, I'm going to be using the GIF and the ball one mask.gif. If you notice that it's a green ball, which I created in Photoshop 32 by 32 pixels, and it's got a black background, and then the mask is the same size, 32 by 32, but it's black where the uh, sprite is and the rest is white. By combining those two together you end up with a transparent image which looks just like a ball. So if I run it again you don't see the surrounding. This is called masking. Right, so if I bring it back this was the um, mod GDI1 which is just a few declarations of all the different graphics uh, using mainly GDI32 which is a standard library shipped with um, 
Windows XP, Windows NT 2000, um, and quite a few others. I think 98 as well. It's an it's a integral part of Windows. Uh, and it gives you lots of graphics options. You can use directly access the internals of Windows, which makes things a lot quicker. And it's some of the best. Um, go to Project Explorer. That was Mod GI. Some of the best graphics routines that you can get hold of for Windows uh, that are built in. So, uh, what else we've got? We've got the form, and in the form, I've drawn a picture box and called it PB Box One. I've got label one and label two. I've got two timers. Um, this is for optimization. I've got one timer that ticks every five milliseconds and one that types every 10. I did actually have that up to 50. Let's put it up to 50. And uh, that basically means that every tick you can get above one, one millisecond, which is the lowest resolution you can get on uh, normal timers, the bigger you can make this number, the less calls you're making every millisecond, so the less strain you're putting on all the resources. So if you can, you make that as big as you, put, you can. So that's timer one, and in timer one, I've got ball x equals ball x plus speed x, ball y equals ball y plus speed y, and draw graphics. So it's updating the balls left and right and up and down, and then it's drawing the graphics. Uh, and timer two, I've got the collision checking, checking if it's hitting the side of the pic picture box, uh, the right side, uh, hit the bottom of the picture box, left side and the top. So it's four checks and then also in the slow one I've got the ball x and ball y uh, caption. So it updates the caption to tell you where the ball x and ball y are in label one and label two. So this function, draw graphics, if I right click and uh, go to the definition, that takes me into the subroutine for draw graphics, which is in uh, mod sprites, which is the other module. Close those. So it cleans the back buffer. This is the first thing. You bit blip my back buffer, zero, zero, form one dot picture box width, form one dot p box one dot height background sprite zero zero source copy and what this does is copy the background sprite which is the picture of the shooting star and paste it into my back buffer which is the back buffer so this doesn't actually go on the screen then once you've done that you uh, put in the ball x and ball y um, into 32 by 32 which is the size of the sprite the sprite mask first using something called VB source and and then the second line or third line in here bit blip my back buffer comma ball x comma ball y comma 32 comma 32 comma ball sprite comma 0 comma 0 VB source invert so you uh, bit blip the mask then you bit blip the sprite and then you do a, a, an invert which cancels out any bits of white in the image leaving you just the ball so the ball has gone on to the background in the back buffer. So this is all done off screen. And then finally, bit blip form1.pbox.htc. So this is the main area, graphic area, which is the picture box device context. And that's where you bit blip my back buffer. So you use the first, you use my back buffer for the first three to do all the calculations and to bit blip the images and then finally you bit it to the screen with this this one uh, using the following command bit blip form one dot pbox one dot htc comma zero comma zero form one dot pbox one comma width comma form one dot pbox one comma height comma my back buffer comma then there's a little line there to show that you keep going zero comma zero comma vb source copy and that's draw graphics